So the athletes that move the fastest are not the strongest. But they direct their efforts towards becoming stronger. They want to see how much they can squat, how high they can jump, in order to hope that that will translate into speed. But but it doesn't. You can't build speed on top of dysfunction. <laughs> All right, well, Thomas, thanks for being back with us again. This is really the second video. Um, if you haven't watched it, the first video, I would suggest you go back and probably watch it first. It'll kind of explain some of the groundwork a little bit better. So there's gonna be a little card up here and there's also a link down below. You can watch it next. Um, but it kind of breaks down uh, what uh, Thomas does and kind of how it's impacted me and how it can help your game. So today we're going to talk really more about speed and how you can build speed in your swing. Actually, I don't think that's probably the right way to say it. It's not building swing. It's actually getting the swing out of what you already have because of problems that you have. You're just not getting the maximum out. So um, remember, we are giving away uh, uh, his program. Uh, so there's two keywords you're going to need to know, one in the last video and then one from this one that you'll need to comment down below. We'll cover that a little bit later. So don't forget about that. Thomas has some exercises that he's going to give us links for, that those links will be down below, some specific exercises around speed that he's going to give you to look at. No charge. Definitely check them out. Worth it. And so now we're just going to talk about how we can get speed or unleash the speed from within. So how do we do yeah, that? Yeah, this, well, this is really where my approach starts to break away from the mainstream. So most people, they direct their efforts towards becoming stronger. They want to see how much they can squat, how high they can jump in order to hope that that will translate into speed, but, but it doesn't. You can't build speed on top of dysfunction. And that's because the athletes that move the fastest are the most coordinated. They're the ones that when they tell their body to do something, their body does it quickly and it does it accurately. And in the last video, we talked a little bit about the companionship between uh, muscles around a joint. Frederick used the example of the bicep and tricep. If I am to flex my elbow, if I want to bend my elbow, I contract and shorten my, tri or my biceps to do that. But at the same time, I need to inhibit and allow my triceps to lengthen. And the more efficient that coordination between those two companion muscles, the more efficient I will be at bending my elbow. And the same is true if I want to straighten my, my elbow, I contract and shorten my triceps and my biceps are inhibited. Now, that relationship, that companionship is governed by a neuromuscular reflex called reciprocal inhibition. The more efficient your reciprocal inhibition is, the faster and more accurately you will move. And so if we're looking to increase speed, our effort should be directed towards optimizing reciprocal inhibition. How do you do that? Well, the main reason reciprocal inhibition becomes altered is because of bad posture, because of muscle imbalances. So the first step is to fix your muscle imbalances. Now, once you've done that and you want to become like an Olympic athlete and optimize that movement more, then, then we progress in our flexibility training. So to start out with, to return muscles to optimal length, we use a type of flexibility training called static stretching. And these are the types of stretches that most people are familiar with. Once we have the muscle to optimum length, and we don't want to over lengthen a muscle, by the way, we just want to return the muscle to normal length. And so Frederick can attest to this. These stretches are not extreme. These are not yoga type stretches. These are very simple stretches done in a particular way to return the muscle to normal length. Once we have the muscle at normal length, we progress our flexibility training to active stretching. So with active stretching, we're shortening we're contracting and shortening a muscle on one side of a joint to lengthen and inhibit the companion on the other side of the joint. And that starts to reinforce that reciprocal inhibition even more. Once we've done that for a few weeks, then we progress to dynamic stretching where we're using a full body movement to pull 
a muscle through its full range of motion. And we're doing that in a way that challenges, challenges us to balance while we're doing it. And that really starts to enhance our coordination. When we're talking about hitting a golf ball far, the two main variables that are most important is hitting the sweet spot. There's nothing more important than that, right? People spend all sorts of time trying to get stronger and they're not even hitting that sweet spot. Hit that sweet spot, which is going to require that you have a repetitive and consistent swing, which means you're going to have to be coordinated. And the second variable is the accelerating through impact. People really focus on club head speed and really the, the most important thing is acceleration. Now to accelerate means you have to change your movements really quickly. And again, that comes back to being coordinated. So rather than focusing your efforts on becoming stronger, you should be focusing your efforts on becoming more coordinated and practicing more. Yeah. I know that um, frequently, you know, I see people or I hear about people saying, well, I need to stretch because I, I'm, I'm tight or whatever. And, you know, there was kind of a realization. I, I know that a lot of times people will try and just like, if like, Hey, let's bend over and see if you can touch your toes. Right. And there's a stretch you can do that. But I also know that when we do some of the release techniques that you have in your program and, and, and these techniques, guys, these are very simple things with very inexpensive pieces of equipment. Um, I'm going to throw in a picture right here of all these things. As you can see, I'm just using a, a large kind of ball that's like a softball, and I'm using some bands, um, and really not much more than that. So I know that when I feel tight, I know for me, one of the worst things I can do is stretch in a way that I feel like it kind of feels good at the moment. So for me, I have so much trouble within my back and my hip complex that um, the front muscles are overactive. The, my back, the ones are going along the, my, uh, in my uh, glutes, and going, those are actually the long muscles. So the idea, I don't need to stretch them. A lot of times I will want to do that and kind of push over because for some reason it kind of feels good at the moment because it does something to, I guess, interfere with the pain. But then when I'm done, it's much worse. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it creates a vicious cycle. You're right. Yeah, it really is. But if I do the release techniques, where if I use that ball in those positions that you show and that you demonstrate, like I mean, the the work you have to do is just sit on the ball in a certain spot. Like that's that's like the vast majority of that release and that relaxation. And so by doing that in a couple of spots in my glute, and I know along the sides of my. Uh, quads or on the, whatever that's called on the sides yeah. is is uh i feel a lot more flexible and i never stretched that like actively like tried to pull the muscle and that's where i think people can get into trouble that they do stretch stretching exercises that are maybe even like for me stretching something that's already too long and it's not helpful um, as opposed to actually addressing the issue. And I, why? But when I do that, though, I notice that it's the areas that you have me hit are you refer to them as trigger points or something like that, which means it's painful <laughs> when you're on yeah. there. But Whenever it is a way. The word trigger means pain. <laughs> <laughs> but really, I mean, I think that that what I what I what I think in, in my opinion is is that that pain is kind of demonstrating how screwed up or dysfunctional or whatever it is that I've done there because in some areas I hit those areas and I can feel it, but it doesn't have nearly the same, like a lot of times, like I'll do it on my right side and it'd be like excruciating and I'll get to the same side, but on my left side, it's a little uncomfortable, but it's not the same. And I, and, and the, the more pain I feel, like if I've done something, if I've gotten up and I'd slept wrong or something like that, the more pain I feel there, the, the more it's relaxed. And almost every time when I go through this routine, no matter how much, and if you've had back problems, like, you know, where it feels like a knife is jabbing you in the butt or, you know, like your back is going to just slip out. I do these exercises and I don't, that's not the right term. It's not even an exercise. I do these routines and every time. My back is so much more relaxed. It's just like 
It's just, it's, it is, it's just like everything is just released. And I'm trying to understand like, what, what is that? Like when I'm hitting that sore point or that trigger point, what, what exactly is going on? I mean, like how, how is it that by pushing on something that's so painful, help? Like usually you're like, oh, pain, no good, no good, right? But in this case, it's like perfect. Yeah, it's the one instance where pain is actually productive. When we work out, we never push through the pain. In fact, I mean, this is getting a little off topic, but just a little teaser here. To enhance um, your endurance, you avoid fatigue. But I'll just put that little side. You can think about that. In order to become more, uh, have more endurance, you never want to become tired. So, <laughs> but those the body recognizes uh, dysfunction as an injury and initiates an injury cycle. And part of that injury cycle includes the development of these adhesions within the muscle. And those adhesions, that's the trigger point. And so we use a foam roller, we use a baseball, a softball, really anything we can find to apply pressure to those adhesions. And that pressure initiates a neuromuscular reflex called autogenic inhibition. And this reflex causes changes within your nervous system that result in the muscle relaxing and that trigger point eventually, I mean, it it dissipates sometimes, sometimes within 30 seconds, sometimes it takes months and sometimes it's something that you continuously have to work on. But that's what that, that pain is, that trigger point is that adhesion that the body developed because you have dysfunction around that joint. Yeah. Yeah, I I uh, I know uh, the routines that you have. Like when I first started, it was very much about just uh, my body was so screwed up. Um, and and guys, this is like went down to scratch, better than scratch. Actually, won a golf tournament, and then and then I started working pretty hard with Thomas. He was kind enough. He had seen some of the struggles I had and gave me suggestions and his posts. If you don't also down below his YouTube channel, posting routines all the time to help explain a lot of this, as well as his Instagram, always posting a lot of free stuff there. But he was helping me there. But it was after all of that, that I started this work and uh, intensely uh, like on a full thing. And so even though I had all that dysfunction from and had that success, it didn't mean I didn't have dysfunction. And, um, and it recreated what was probably a lot of the inconsistencies that I had in, in my play, you know, there'd be times where I just couldn't repeat it. And then, you know, sometimes I would get away with it, but, um, but the beginning routines are about kind of getting yourself back into a more balanced, you know, all of that, the ones that are over and under, like it's trying to get that a little bit more balanced. And then you slowly start to build on those routines to be a little bit, I don't know if it's intense, but certainly more demanding in the result, you know, whether it's a quick uh, one where you kind of stand on one leg and you rotate up, you know, you can rotate up and then you get to the point where it's like fast, but still have to maintain your balance. So there are a lot of routines that he has that really, um, they definitely, uh, will relieve a lot of the pain you have. And then he does give you things that to work on. And again, these are all things like all the work I've done been right here in my house. Very simple. Uh, the most difficult thing to pull off are the ones where you have to attach a band to something, but I've used two different things. I've used the post on the stairwells to attach it. And I, I, in my basement, I have some poles that are, uh, that's their supporting poles that I'll, I'll wrap it around down there. Uh, otherwise everything I've always done, even like in my living room, I just go over to where the, uh, the stair post is and I'm able to hook the band on there on the, on the main post. So these are very simple things that you can do at home. It doesn't require you to go to a gym. Uh, they're very inexpensive items to use. Um, and really, I mean, probably the most expensive piece of equipment is probably your computer or your phone that you're watching it on because these are, $10, $15 10 15 dollar items. Yeah, and it, and it's funny Frederick the uh when you're talking about finding things to hook the bands on, I have guys on tour that I, I'll do a live workout with them and they're in their kitchen. There's mm-hmm. a guy on tour, yeah, you know, he's working on his kitchen finding a thing, finding a wall, whatever yeah. you have, the things that you're doing 
in your house are the same things that some of the world's best athletes are doing. Yeah. All I'm using, I mean, like this is my love hate relationship with this one. <laughs> this is the one that causes the pain, <laughs> uh, but also creates all the, uh, leaves all the pain. But this is a very simple thing that I'm able to take with me. I use uh, a little band a lot uh, as well. And this is, you know, very inexpensive. I mean, it's it's not like it's going to ever go bad. Um, and uh, I know with, for me, uh, some of the pain I have in my elbows um, for, and my wrist, uh, you have some routines for this as well. Um, and this was just a simple, specific uh, unit uh, type of... Uh, piece of equipment i guess theraband 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 flex, flex bar yeah yeah so um very simple routines uh that help to relieve that same sort of uh you know, i started feeling some of that pain in my forearm uh, again uh, a few months ago that i had felt last year when my literally pulled my own elbows out of joint with the muscles and uh and so that that's really, you know, relieved it. And it's amazing how much I have to do it that for whatever it is that I'm doing, I don't know if it's tension and a keyboard set a certain way, but, um, it always relieves it. But again, these are very simple things. If you're interested in these, um, I think Thomas has some links to a lot of this stuff. We'll put those down below to the exact stuff that we're using. Uh, as you can see, it's pretty inexpensive. You may or may not be able to get a lot of this, or you may have to wait a little while. But um, because I know that like Amazon is just not shipping much that's not food right now. So, but um, anyways, so uh, I guess the uh, the last thing I want to cover uh, in this one is that this is, again, this is going to be part of a series. So in the next one, we're going to talk a little bit about some exercises, some good things that you can do, like when you get to the golf course, because you should not be like getting out of car and trying to go to the first tee and swing. It's just... Like it, if you do that, just I, you're not trying to play for a score at all. And, you know, hitting a breakfast ball doesn't count. And um, and this is this is how this is where injuries can come from. And, I, you know, there's some very simple things that will make you feel better when you go out. You'll just feel better and you'll be able to swing better. And hopefully, you know, if you're just playing some matches with your guys that you'll be able to get up early in those matches because they'll they will not have done that. So. Um, the, uh, the, uh, the other word, so for the free, uh, membership to his site. Uh, so we had one word that was in the last video. So you got to find that word in this video. The word is Thomas. So make sure you put that down there. Now you also have to tell us why you want this program. And for those of you that are interested in additional support with this, for me, it's, you know, the hard part, even though I have the pain, it's the discipline of doing it on a very consistent basis can be hard. And I'm looking for people to help hold me accountable. And if you're interested in doing that, and if you're serious about this, I'll be interested in keeping you accountable as well. Um, also, if you have any questions or you have some specific concerns or some troubles that you have, leave them in the comments. One way or another, we're going to get back to you on that, either as a separate video or with some links to some videos that Thomas has to help you with your specific item. Also remember, Thomas has offered to give you guys a 50% discount on the program. The program is, it's a one-time fee. You always have access to these videos. You'll be able to do all the things that I'm doing, you know, even try and play at a, at a higher level. Um, and it's, well, it, it'd be the greatest money. It's cheaper than a month's membership at the gym or one trip to the doctor or, or anything else. And uh, I think that you'll uh, appreciate it for your health. And I think you, it'll, it'll be valuable in your game. So remember, make sure you subscribe down below. If you got value out of this, definitely hit the like button. It certainly help us out. And in our next video, we're going to cover some things you can do with the course. Thomas, thank you. Thank you. All right, guys. Enjoy the walk.